Hi guys, we are on chapter sixth grade, chapter two, lesson one. We're gonna go ahead and get started with number two. It says to write the fraction as a mixed number in simplest form. So it wants us to write them as fractions. I'm gonna go ahead and move that and pull this over, okay? When you are working with decimals, you need to know their places. So tenths after the decimal ends in THS, okay? Tenths, hundredths, and then if we had another one, it would be thousandths. Okay, so this one ends in the hundredth, which means you, you put it over a hundred. Okay, now your number is two. That's what goes up top. Okay, now we're going to make that super easy because when we reduce it, two goes into two once and two goes into a hundred 50 times. Done. Okay, one over 50. Okay, all right. We're going to go over to number three. Number three says 4.8. Well, this has a number before the decimal. That's your whole number. Okay, so this is going to be a mixed number. Okay, your eight is in the tenth spot, which means you're going to put it over 10. Okay, that does not mean that you are done. Okay, we're still going to keep our four because that doesn't go anywhere. Okay, an eight over ten, the smallest, or sorry, the biggest number that goes into eight and ten is two. So two goes into eight four times, and two goes into ten five times. Four and four fifths. Right, I didn't have a glare. I'm working on it. Okay, going to number four. Okay, we have six and twenty-five. Thousands. It's in the thousandth spot. So we're going to keep our six all the way through. That doesn't go anywhere. Okay. This is in the, the five is where it ends up. It's in the thousandth place. So we're going to put everything over a thousand. Okay. Your number is 25. Now, here's what I love about having numbers that end in zero. Okay. You're 25 over 100. 25 goes into 25 once, and 25 goes into 100 four times, and then the zero right there, we just add it on to the end. So six and one over 40, okay? All right, make sure you guys are showing your work, how you're getting there, okay? All right, number five, okay? This one's a little bit different because we're not reducing it. We're going to actually, we're going to multiply it to get 25 to 100, because I know that 25 goes into 100 four times. So if I multiply the bottom four times, I get 100. But that means that I need to multiply the top four times as well, okay? Now, four times 17 is 68. So now I have 68 over 100, okay? So now I have to turn that into a decimal, okay? I need the eight to wind up in the hundredth, and if I do 0.68, the 8 is in the hundredth spot. So I'm fine. Tenths, hundredths. Okay? So that's my decimal, 0.68. Okay? All right. So we're going to go to number 6. Hold on just a second. Oh, I'm sorry. Actually, so six, seven, and eight, I want you guys to do yourself. You could totally do that. I have total faith in you, okay? We are going to go to number nine. Number nine on your thing has a part that looks like this. Nope, not better. Oh, sorry, guys. I'm trying to fix it so that you don't have a... There we go. Okay. All right. So, have a try that looks like this, okay? If it is before this, which A and B are both before the one, then your first number is going to be zero before the decimal. If it's after, it's going to be one point, whatever it is. Okay? So that one, if it's after, it's going to have a one before the decimal. If it's before, it's going to have a zero. Okay? So A is one before 0 0.5. 
Well, that would be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. Okay. B is one after it. Well, 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Okay. C is after the one. So I have to have that one down. Okay. Then it's 1.1, 1, 1.2. 1, 1. Okay. D, I want you guys to do that yourself. Okay. Go ahead and do, that's number 12. So this one be 9, 10, 11, D is 12, okay? You guys do that, okay? We are going to go to 13, okay? And 13 says, raised to a five eighths of a stamp collection, what is the amount as a decimal, okay? So when we're dividing fractions, to make decimals because that is how you make a decimal out of a fraction you divide okay we call it tip trap divide so if we tipped backwards then the five would go in front of that eight and the eight goes in the box so this is trap so tip trap and then just divide okay so we have five goes into eight and how many times, okay? So five goes into eight, one time, one times five is five, subtract. I get three, okay? Now, here's the tricky part. I still have a remainder and I don't want one. So I'm gonna put decimal point zero, okay? I'm gonna bring that zero down. Oh, but I do have to remember to bring it up into the answer, okay? So five goes into 30, six times, six times five is 30 get zero. Now I'm good. Okay, so your answer 1.6. Okay, and 1.6, and you can put of her, or sorry, yeah, yeah 1.6 of her stamp collection. Okay, all right, 14. Says, what if you scored a 0 0.80 on a test? What fraction of the test in simplest form did you answer correctly? So, okay, so I love when a decimal ends in a zero when it wants us to turn it because just cross it off. Then the eight is in the tenths place, which means 10 is my denominator, and that eight is my numerator. And like we said in one of the problems before, the smallest number that goes into 8 and 10 is going to be 2. And 2 goes into 8 4 times. 2 goes into 10 5 times. Okay. So you can put 4 fifths correctly or correct so that you have a word problem word answer. Okay. You've got a label. Okay. Now, we're going to go on to the back. Okay. And the lesson check, you guys are going to do that yourself. You can totally do that. I have faith in you. Okay. We're going to go down to spiral review. It's really important to remember what it is that you have learned already. So we are going to go to number three. It says Gina bought 2.3 pounds of red apples and 2.42 pounds of green apples. They were on sale for 75 cents a pound. How much did the apples cost altogether? So first you need to know. How many pounds of apples you have all together, then we need to multiply that by 75 cents per pound so that we go ahead and find out the answer, okay? Now, our label this time is just going to be a dollar sign, okay? All right, so first we have to add these up. So drop your decimal first. Zero plus two, two, three plus four, seven, and two plus two, four. So you have 4.72 pounds of apples. And each pound is 75 cents. So we're going to do some math. Okay. All right. I'm going to go with. Okay. So five times two is 10. Carry your one. Five times seven is 35. Plus one more is 36. Carry your three. Five times four is 20. Plus three more is 23. Okay. Here we go. Tick. Tack. So, okay, don't want to use those anymore. Don't want to use the five anymore. I need to put a placeholder zero, okay? 
7 times 2 is 14. Carry that 1. 7 times 7 is 49, plus 1 more is 50. Carry that 5. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 5 is going to be 33. Add those up. Okay? 0 plus 0 is still 0. 6 plus 4 is 10. Carry the 1. 1 plus 3 is 4. 2 plus 3 is 5. And 3, bring down. Now, in the problem, we went in 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So we're going to go in 1, 2, 3, 4 times. Put our decimal there. Now, when we're dealing with American money, we don't have two places after the decimal point. Because they're zeros, you can just cross them off. We just need the two. So your answer is $3.54. Okay? Fact number three. Number four. Says 10 has 4.66 pounds of walnuts, 2.1 pounds of cashews, and 8 pounds of peanuts. He mixes them together and divides them equally among 18 bags. How many pounds of nuts are in each bag? So, first, First, we are going to okay. And first, we know how many pounds he has all together. So 4.66, 2.1, and 8. Okay. Now, I'm going to, for the sake of lining up my decimals, I'm going to fill in the blank past the decimals with zero. That way I have three numbers all the way across. Drop down my decimal, go ahead and add, okay? So six plus nothing, six. Six plus one is seven. Four plus two is six. Plus eight more is gonna be 14, okay? So he has 14.76 pounds. And he wants to split those up between 18 bags. Now, I'm going to go over and I'm going to write down my multiples of 18 down here just so that I've got them handy because I don't know those off the top of my head. Six, 144, and 166. Okay. So, now that I have those, I'm just using those so that I can do it quickly with my division, okay? So, first, I know that I don't have a decimal outside, so I can just lift this decimal up where it is. I don't have to move anything, okay? Now, 18 is not going to go into 4. Placeholder, okay? 18 is not going to go into 14. Placeholder, okay? 18 will go into 147. So we're going to go down until we get as close as we can without going over, and it looks like 144. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 times. 8 times 18 was 144. Subtract. Okay. Four my, or sorry, 7 minus 4 is 3, and those are the same, so we just have 3. Okay. So now, 3 is smaller than 18. I did my checking. Okay. Bring down your 6. 18 goes into 36 two times. Two times 18 is 36. When we subtract, we get zero, which means we have 0.82 pounds. Now, you can put per bag, or you can just put 0.82 pounds. Okay? If you're a little bit lazy like Miss Leah with writing out answers, you're probably just going to write. Okay. All right. So number five. Okay. It wants us. Second, let me find the right one here. Okay. Okay. All right. We're going to do the same thing, guys. Okay. All right. So number five says Mia needs to separate 450 pens into 18 packs. And it wants to know how many packs. So whatever your answer is, is going to be packs. Okay? 
All right. Oh, just kidding. It's going to be in pens. I want to know how many pens are going to be in those packs. Okay. So, again, I'm going to come over and I'm going to write down my, my multiples of 18 really fast because I don't know them off the top of my head. And I'm going to need them. Um, I think I can just go with that. Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and start, okay? 18 is not going to go into 4, placeholder, okay? 18 will go into 45, as close as I can get is 36, which is 2 times. So 2, I'm going to write my 36 in. I'm going to subtract 5, can't take away 6. I'm going to make that a 3, make that a 15, okay? 15 take away 6 is 9, okay? 9 is smaller than 18, so I can bring down my zero and 90 is right here so one two three four five five times 18 was 90. i have zero left over so i'm done so my answer is going to be 25 pins okay all right last one guys hold in there okay so we are gonna go I went over here and I already wrote down my multiples of 19 because, again, I don't know those, okay? So, 19, not going to go in to 5, placeholder, okay? 19 will go into 50. It looks like the closest I can get is 38, and that's two times. Subtract, I get 12, okay? Nice. Do that, okay? So now 12 is less than so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring down my 3, okay? And it looks like the closest I can get to 123 without going over is 114. That's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 times. 6 times 19 was 114. I'm going to subtract. 3 cannot minus 4. I'm going to make that a 13 and borrow one of those. 13 minus 4 is 9, okay? 9 is smaller than 19. I'm going to bring down my 5. And right here is 95. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times, okay, 5 times 19 was 95, 0, okay? So, sorry guys, I didn't even read you that question. It says that Evan buys 19 tubes of watercolor paint for $50.35. What is the cost of each tube of paint? So your answer it's going to have a dollar sign because it wants to know how much each one was. And each one was $2.65. Okay? All right, guys, that was 